Good morning, Covenant City Church. Our devotion today will be taken from Psalm 62, verse 5. Let's read the passage together. Psalm 62, 5. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. So we see here in this verse that the psalmist has given us the imperative, the command. Our souls are commanded to wait for God. And why? Because our hope is from him. So this morning in this one short verse, we will look at what it means to wait on the Lord and how waiting on the Lord demonstrates or proves that our hope is found in him. So first, what does it mean to wait on the Lord? If you've been a Christian for a while, we might have already heard a lot about this idea of waiting on the Lord because we see this theme all throughout scriptures. We see it sprinkled throughout the Psalms in the Old and the New Testament, in Isaiah, Lamentations, Romans. God again and again reminds his people to wait on him. So we read that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. We read that we can trust that God is good to those who wait for him and so on. So we know this is an important topic because it appears over and over again in the Bible. And many of us might also feel like it's a relevant topic for us because we might feel like we're in a situation or in a season where we're waiting for something. But let's take a look at what it actually means. Um, so to wait on the Lord means that we intentionally remember who God is and who we are. We can celebrate the fact that we are actually not in control of our own lives, but we trust the one who is. It means that we're content with our growth or our circumstances, even when it seems slow. Sometimes God places us in a season where everything seems to be moving way too slowly. Waiting on the Lord means that we are content even during such a time. It means that we stay when he says stay. We go when he says go. We are neither impetuous nor despairing. Waiting on the Lord does not mean, though, that we never feel frustrated. Feeling those complex, anxi uh, those complex emotions of anxiety or frustration as we're waiting is not sinful, but it's what we do with those emotions that matters. Right? When we wait on the Lord, we bring these emotions to Him and we ask Him to show us what to do with them. In our waiting, God grows us in humility because we realize that He is the one who put us in whatever situation we're facing. And regardless of what the world would like us to believe, our life is just not our own. In our waiting, God grows us in patience and humility, taking apart our pride piece by piece and growing our reliance on him. So waiting on the Lord is not a passive uh, waste of time, like waiting in a doctor's office or waiting in line. Waiting on the Lord, rather, is the hallmark of the Christian life, something that we see God's people doing again and again. In the Old Testament, God's people were waiting for the Messiah. We now are waiting for his return, right? The whole world is groaning and waiting for the final renewal of all things. So in our waiting, God is sanctifying us and he is drawing us to himself. So we can see that this method of living, right, of waiting on the Lord is valuable and meaningful for us as Christians. It's a way as a way for us to live. But if we're honest, this is really hard to do, right? One of the reasons um, I think that we can see is even if we go back to the beginning of the Bible, to the beginning of um, when the world was created. So if we take a look at the fall in Genesis 3 in the Garden of Eden, we see that at the heart of Adam and Eve's rebellion was the fact that they did not trust that God had their best interests in mind, right? They didn't want to obey his command not to eat of the fruit of the garden because they didn't believe that what God said was really for their best. They thought their own plan was better and following their own ideas was the way to true happiness. They were not content to wait on the Lord, but instead felt like they had to take their shot and execute their own plan. And this is true of us today as well. How often do I not believe that God has my best interests in mind? How often do I feel like surely here he has gotten it wrong, right? Surely I could do better. Ultimately, I don't want to wait on the Lord because I don't trust his goodness to me. 
So if we go back to our verse, right, we can see that waiting is not only necessary, the psalmist also gives the reason for our waiting. Why do we wait on the Lord? Because our hope comes from him. So our waiting is not a fruitless task. It's not a purposeless mission. We wait for God because he is the foundation of our hope. He is the rock on which we build our lives. To be brought to a place where God is our only hope is actually a great mercy. If we can recognize that our waiting can bring us to a place of deeper reliance on God, if we use our time and our energy to study God's word and meditate on his glory, if we allow him to do surgery on our hearts and take out everything that is not pleasing to him, in our waiting, God will grow our faith and our trust in him. In Romans 4, we see an example of Abraham who waited on the Lord and then that waiting strengthened his faith because he was fully assured of his hope. We read in Romans 4 that in hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations as he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promises of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he promised. So I pray that God might use the waiting that I experience in my life to grow me strong in my faith, to root out the idols in my heart that are not honoring to him, and to turn me day by day by his grace and mercy to someone who is able to bring glory to God. Friends, I wonder if we can take a moment this morning to ask the question, where might God be slowing us down? Where might he might be making us feel like we are shackled or tied down to something that we do not want to be our reality? What might change if we stopped seeing those situations as frustrations but instead as opportunities for sanctification, opportunities to live out the reality that our hope is found in God and God alone. So what are you waiting for? Maybe you're waiting for a job, a child, a spouse. Maybe we're waiting for a time when we won't feel so tired all the time, or a time when we can travel to exciting new places, or a time when we won't feel so insecure anymore. We may carry our unfulfilled longings with us wherever we go. But even as we wait for those earthly things, even as we recognize that it is not wrong, we nevertheless remind ourselves that we wait on God and God alone because our hope is found in him. And we can trust that his plans for us, even here, even now, even in the waiting, his plans are always good. Let's not miss it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the one that our soul longs for. You are our creator, our savior, the author of heaven and earth. And we confess that so often um, when we are in times of waiting, we feel frustrated and impatient and we doubt and we don't trust that your plans will work out for our good. Father, when our stories are not going the way that we long for them to go, would you remind us of who you are? Would you lift our eyes off of our circumstances and place them onto you? Because we can trust you. Thank you for your love and your grace that you have poured out on us. We pray in your name. Amen.